So you're one of the gatekeepers of one of the world's most exclusive clubs. So numbers I've seen of every year about two and a half million Americans mm -hmm. pass away. And in that same year, the New York Times might run about, what, a thousand right. obituaries? Right, for space reasons. And I realize some of this process may be confidential, but apart from obvious candidates, former presidents and the like, uh, how is it determined who gets covered, who gets entrance into this highly exclusive club? What are the standards and what kinds of discussions do you have? And what are some features about a person that maybe wouldn't be so intuitive to our listeners that actually are quite dispositive for determining whether you let them through the gates? There is no one cookie cutter model for who gets in and who gets out. How could there be? Lives are so different. And indeed, apart from the people who are the shoe-ins, the presidents, the kings and queens, there is this whole other 90% of the iceberg that's hidden but which we may want to expose in our pages. And these are these fascinating backstage players, the inventors of kitty glitter and the lawn flamingo, et cetera. What we look for generally, and the question that's asked by our three section editors who agonize every day over the volume of submissions we get from families, from funeral homes, stories we read in out-of-town papers, foreign papers, the wire services, things come flooding in and these decisions have to be made every day. Indeed, it's like the, a meeting of the admissions committee of the most selective university in the world. And, and it's what, three of you, five of you? There are our section head, Bill McDonald, and his two deputies, Jack Cadden and Peter Keepnews. The editors are charged first and last with the responsibility of deciding who gets in every day and roughly the length to whom it's assigned. They often do it in co consultation with the writers. My Original training was as a cellist. I later trained in linguistics. So if they have questions on classical musicians, linguists, uh, they say, is this person important? Is this person doing? I'm worth doing. I may weigh in. My colleagues weigh in similarly in their subject areas. Um, the criterion we look for if we had to pick a single question that can be asked of every applicant at our gates is, did he or she change the culture. 